Hi everyone, my name is Selena Belial and I am the founder and one of the board approved CE providers teaching hot stone massage. I'm also one of the authors at Massage Magazine who writes about hot stone massage. We were on the cover of a 2021 Mag a massage Magazine month. Um, the cover story was the updated safety protocols for the massage industry with hot stone massage. I authored that and I also authored this article right here, how to sanitize massage stones. This was written during COVID-19. So we gave you extreme steps on how to sanitize stones and use them in a way that would help people feel more safe. Okay, so if you want to see more and above and beyond this video, we have this uh, Massage Magazine article available at massagemag.com. And if you want more training above and beyond what I'm about to show you, you can come to our company website. It's ceinstitute.com and go to Hotstone Massage. What I'm about to show you is one of the training units that's part of our pre recorded Hotstone Massage self paced training. It's actually this course right here. And during this training, we have a visual instructor demonstration that shows students, I'm going to be washing the whole pot, removing the liner, removing the, the dirty lining towel and washing my spoons and oil bottles and more. So let me show you how that's done here at the school in our instructor demo with this training unit, okay? Keep in mind if I reference things in the training unit to the course, this is the course I'm talking about right here. So let me show you right now, this is how we advise how you should massage, excuse me, wash your hot stone massage equipment. Keep in mind for greater training, you should always attend a CE course that's board approved in this case with hot stone massage. So to sanitize massage stones, I will take the entire hot stone heater with all the supplies and equipment within it, including the stones, my oil bottles, my thermometers, a slotted spoon and all directly over to the sink. Make sure if you're hot stone equipment is within reach of a sink, you've unplugged it before you start sanitizing through cleaning using soap and water. Just because water's in the basin doesn't mean that you or your basin can be harmed when you start running water um, uh, for cleaning. So I'm going to glove up to wash my stones. Um, I'm going to wash with soap and water instead of using disinfectants because there is oil on the stones and a disinfectant would not be able to penetrate the physical de debris to sanitize. Um, so the best way to sanitize your stones and most massage equipment, especially if it's porous, is to wash it with soap and water. We're simply trying to lower the level and number of germs on this equipment to an acceptable level. Now I'm removing the oil bottles. I keep multiple ones in there because I'm trying to keep the oil warm during the entire serv service. I sometimes have a stainless steel bowl for ice and water for cold stone massage for like the face during a hot stone surface. And you'll see that I only have a few stones in here. I didn't um, use this example for the 30 stones I might use during a hot stone massage. And that's simply because um, I, you know, what you're going to do with one stone is going to be pretty similar to everything else. Now I usually have white towels lining the basin, basin of my hot water bath. And that's because when you put the stones back into the bath, you do not want them to cling on the bottom of your hard ceramic or metal pot. You would never reuse that white towel from one client to the next. That needs to be laundered and a new clean towel inserted within. Now I'm removing the liner from my heating unit because the liner is contaminated, okay? all the dead skin cells from your client that were acquired by your stones rubbing up and down in their skin and all the germs that were within those dead skin cells are now in your pot. So the pot must be cleaned. I'm going to rinse it out a little bit and then I'm going to start applying a grease cutting dish detergent. Okay. The dish detergents that have grease cutting action, that's the best type of wash soap 
and water wash, I feel you can achieve because it removes a lot of the oily residue that can build up with massage service um, from massage oils and creams, especially if they have not had their lipids removed in the manufacturing process. I'm using a paper towel here to scrub a little bit of the liner itself. Um, you can, of course, use a sponge, but paper towels, I feel, are a little bit cleaner because sponges can harbor germs and bacteria, and so reusing them is not the best practice. Um, you would, of course, dispose of your paper towels. It's easy. As long as you're using them sparingly, it's cost-effective and um, perhaps best practices for sanitizing in a situation like this. Now I'm doing my rinse of my massage equipment. Make sure you're using hot water if that is available to you. Um, in this case, I am in a bathroom sink right outside of my treatment area. But um, if you're creating your own establishment or doing a build out, try and install a kitchen faucet, which could be higher or maybe has a sprayer attached. Um, spraying uh, with the water rinse would probably be one of the most effective ways to sanitize your equipment. And it'd probably be a lot faster as well. So I'm doing several rinses here, um, continually rotating my liner to get all surfaces rinsed, try and remove any physical debris that was dislodged with the cleaning process. And after I've cleaned my liner, I don't necessarily hand dry every single um, item in my hot stone. I usually allow it to air dry. And um, of course you could um, physically dry this with paper towels that will remove even more left behind germs. Okay, so I'll leave that to you. I feel this is an acceptable manner to allow them to air dry. As massage therapists, we don't wanna be cleaning all day. Um, so, um, and we've never found anything to become overly infectious by allowing our items to uh, air dry instead of towel dry. Now I'm also cleaning um, with soap and water um, and using a paper towel with friction, um, the actual lid to the hot bath, disposing of my paper towel um, that I use to clean the lid of the hot bath liner. And in this case where I have a plastic, I'm sorry, not a plastic, a glass lid, um, you can also use disinfectant wipes, okay? Um, not only would I be able to use it on the lid, um, but make sure that the surface where you're putting your equipment after it's been cleaned has been sanitized. There could be a dwell time here. Um, and I actually washed this prior to, but I didn't have a chance to video me washing a counter. I'm pretty sure you know how to wash a counter. <laughs> but, you know, I just wanted to do a visual there too to remind you, you know, make sure you're not putting clean objects on dirty surfaces like the side of your sink. Okay, so this is a staff sink only. It's not available for patrons. It's where we do most of our washing of equipment. And I've washed out my cold water bowl that I'm using with my hot stone surface service. Um, I've got my slotted spoon here continuing to wash and physically wash each tool and item independently. Okay. You want to pick up a bunch of tools and equipment together and try and wash them all at once. Um, that wouldn't be very effective. When you're washing, you're trying to dislodge germs and harmful bacteria and so forth from uh, the surfaces and objects, and then rinse anything you've dislodged with soap and water and scrubbing. Um, to physically wash that down the drain. Now I'm covering all of the items that um, I want to wash and sanitize here. And now I'm individually twirling each stone in my hands with the soap and water on it in attempt to remove the oil um, and any jar germs or bacteria um, that are within um, the equipment itself. I'm washing the oil bottles individually. And if I felt that something was uh, specifically dirty, I could use one of those scrub brushes you can see on the side of the sink, whether it's a toothbrush or a full-on scrub brush. And that will help physically dislodge any sticky, oily um, residue that would be on my stones or stone equipment as well. 
So I'm running out of a little bit of detergent here. These are the thermometers that are in the hot stone bath. Just because the thermometers do not have direct contact with the client does not mean that they cannot become infected with harmful germs and bacteria um, because they are um, contaminated, um, cross-contamination here from sticking your hands in the bath, putting uh, stones that were contacting the client into the bath and so forth. Um, if you used it on another client without sanitizing, you could possibly expose the next client to your um, to the germs of the previous client. Now you'll notice I put a new, fresh, clean towel in the bottom of this liner, and I'm putting my newly rinsed stones in the bottom of this um, hot stone pot. Okay. So I usually let these air dry. Some people want to physically dry them. There could be, you know, additional germs and pathogens still on your stones. They're, they're porous. Okay. You could spend more time cleaning and rinsing if you like. If you feel anything sticky, you could use that toothbrush or the bigger brush to remove the debris again. Um, that's your choice. I would rather do that than do a bleach soak or something. It's a better chance of removing the debris with a brush than trying to do a soak with bleach. And again, as well as individually washing each item, I'm individually rinsing each item as well. You want to pick up a handful of stones and try and rinse them all at once. Two stones could be together and they're not going to get rinsed at all, especially when they're polish, uh, machine polish. They have very flat surfaces and you're not going to fit water in between the two of them when they're um, side by side uh, at the exact same size. So my oil bottles are going to be um, rinsed as well. Um, if you That oil bottle didn't have very much oil in it, so I'm going to put more oil in that bottle before I restore it to my hot pot. Um, and again, I usually have multiple smaller bottles. They're easier to reach and hold. And if I drop one on the floor, I have extra. <laughs> I would never put a, um, a bottle that was on the floor back into my hot pot. Okay. So there you have it. Um, the lid will not be on here because it is, um, I'm sorry, the, um, it's okay to air dry these. The lid will not seal and make my stones air tight. You would never ever take wet stones and put it in an airtight, um, container. I do want the air exposed to those stones and so forth so that the items within the pot can air dry. Um, keep in mind, it's a slotted spoon that's allowing that air to come into the uh, pot itself and allow the items um, to air dry rather than spending the time of drying each item one by one. And that is how we sanitize our stones and equipment here at CE Institute for Hot Stone Massage.